Good morning, class. Today we're going to be discussing the settlement of the 13th colony. The native Indians lived in the United States first. European explorers came here and interacted with them. Why did the Europeans come to the New World? For gold. For gold? Good. Gold for freedom of religion. Great. Freedom of religion because what was happening to them over in Europe? They were being persecuted for their religion. They were being killed. Very good. Okay. What did the Europeans want when they came over here? They wanted gold. And who did they think had the gold? The Indians. However, from the video we watched the other, the other day, we know that why did they actually have gold? Because of a Spanish ship that had crashed off the coast of Florida several years earlier. Very good. China was thought to be a land full of riches, which is spices, gold, silk, and silver. Those are the things that the Europeans wanted. And the Europeans wanted a quicker route to use to sell to China. Now, up to that point, they had been selling around, or attempting at least, to sell along the bottom portion of Africa. But that's a very treacherous area of water. Um, a lot of hurricanes start off the coast of Africa. So it's a very, it's a very dangerous area. So, Christopher Columbus, in 1492, he, he's an Italian, first of all, and he goes to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella after going to several other people, and he asked them to fund his journey to find a quicker trade route to East Asia or to India. So, um, so they give him the money, and he sets sail in 1492, and he heads west from Europe, from Spain. Again, the name of the king was King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. You need to make a note on your piece of paper if you don't already have that on there. So in 1492, Columbus lands on an island in the Bahamas, which is between North America and South America. He thought he was in India, so he named the people he met what? What do you name them? Indians. Indians. Very good. Okay, Hernando de Soto was... I'm sorry, let me back up a minute. So in 1492, Christopher Columbus discovers... The New World, he then goes back and tells the Spanish king and queen, and then they start sending more and more people over to the New World. The Spanish that initially settled, I'm sorry, initially came over and conquered many of the ancient Indian civilizations, such as the Mayas, the Incas, the Aztecs, all those guys, down in South America, they were, they were very dangerous people. Well, one of these conquistadors was a man by the name of Hernando de Soto, of course, from Spain. And in 1540, he came up through Tampa, Florida, and into southwest Georgia, near today's Albany, looking for gold. De Soto met Indians on his trip, but his weapons, pl plated armor, and horses overwhelmed the Indians. They got into many different battles, and of course, if you're using bows that were invented during the woodland period against guns, who's going to win? Guns. The guns. Very good. De Soto met Indians again on his trip. Um, thousands of American Indians in Georgia died of disease and of war. Obviously, of war, you guys know what war is, but what disease primarily was it that killed off a lot of the Indian population? Uh, what was it? Uh, Smallpox. Smallpox killed off a large portion of the Indian civilization. De Soto went across Georgia into South Carolina but never found the gold, and he actually died along the Mississippi River, as it says here. English settlement in the New World. England started colonies on the Atlantic coast during the 1600s. Now, the Atlantic coast. It's called the Atlantic coast because it's the eastern portion of North America. And which ocean do we know is right off our east coast? The Atlantic Ocean, right? Good. So, the goals were of the English when they settled here were religion, the freedom of religion, and gaining wealth. Because England, Spain, and France... Throughout the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, were all competing for the largest empires. England wanted raw materials such as wood, cotton, um, and things of that sort from the colonies. England manufactured or made the goods into finished goods and sold to other countries. And this process is known as what? Mercantilism. Very good. The English began to settle Georgia. A law around, honestly, the, the first time that the, the settlement of this area was even mentioned is in 1717, and that's the Magravet of Azalea, 
And who was it that proposed the Magravet of Azalea? Sir Robert uh, Montgomery. Sir Robert Montgomery. Very good. Goods were traded back and forth between England and Georgia. Tobacco, corn, yams, turkeys, peanuts, and pumpkins went to Europe. Horses, chickens, oxen, pigs, and cattle came from Europe to Georgia. So there was a happy relationship between Europe and Georgia. Each was assisting the other, but the area was not yet settled, just used for goods. So people were in this area prior to 1717 in the idea of the Magravet of Azalea, but there wasn't a true colony. Of course, there was already, how many, how many colonies had been established up to that point? Twelve, because Georgia is going to be your 13th English colony. James Oglethorpe. James Edward Oglethorpe was born in London from a very wealthy family, and he ends up going into politics. He's elected to the House of Commons at the age of 26 years old, which is the equivalent of the House of Representatives. It's the lower house in the legislative branch and a bicameral legislative branch. So he wanted to help those in jail for not paying their debts. Um, people who did not pay their debts during this time period were thrown into debtor's prison or debtor's jail. And these were not very clean places. In fact, one of his good friends, who, who was it? Robert, Robert Castile, very good. He ends up dying of smallpox in one of the prisons because of his unsanitary conditions. He wanted some land in the New World to make a colony for the jailed people. In return for this new colony being established, they would work and help England grow economically by setting up a further system of mercantilism. And another major reason was because um, the Spanish, who were in Florida, they, the England wanted to keep the Spanish in Florida away from the Carolinas because the Carolinas were very profitable. Of course, in the Carolinas, they're growing um, cotton, they're growing tobacco, they're a large producer of goods that were traded to England. In 1732, King George II gave land called a charter to 21 trustees, including Oglethorpe, to create a colony. Oglethorpe promised that silk, dyes, wine, spices, and semi-tropical fruit would be sent from Georgia back to England. The first Georgia colonist. Few debtors, former prisoners, or working poor ever made it to Georgia. Georgia's first settlers were given land, tools, and food and they were told that they would defend the colony from invaders. Um, they would set up a militia, also known as a citizen's army, again, to protect from, who was in Florida again? The Spanish, very good. Okay, um, John and Mary Musgrove, or is, is, well, actually, we'll get back to them in just a moment. They would grow trees that attract silkworms. Between 114 and 125 settlers sailed from England on the ship Anne in 1732. No lawyers, slaves, Catholics, or liquor dealers were allowed on the Ann. The ship lands near Savannah in February of 1733, and Oglethorpe goes ashore, and he quickly tries to find someone who speaks English. So he finds a trading post where John and Mary Musgrove were running the trading post, and Mary Musgrove, who was half Indian, half English, she spoke both the Creek language and the English language, so she was able to serve as a translator between founder James Oglethorpe and the head of the Creek Indians in that area known as the Yamacraw Indians, and the head guy was who? What's his name? Chief Tomachichi. Very good. So Chief Tomachichi and James Oglethorpe become very good friends, and Tomachichi actually establishes a city along Yamacraw Bluff, which is overlooking the Savannah River. This became the first settlement of the New Georgia colony, and it's pretty much the establishment of Savannah. Now, Savannah, Georgia's planned city. Savannah was designed and built along the Savannah River to facilitate shipping. Today, nearly 150,000 people live in Savannah. Um, the, the city of Savannah and the way that it was built was actually designed by um, Oglethorpe's friend. Who was it? Robert, Robert Castile, good. And... He had basically established a system of four squares, I'm sorry, 24 squares, and 22 of those squares actually still exist in Savannah today. It's a, um, it's a very nice place. And Savannah, of course, becomes our first